Greetings, friend. The difficulty rating for this puzzle is so high that it could be considered impossible for humans to solve. But I'm going to show you a special trick that will make this puzzle easy. Before we get to solving, I want to recognize some special people in the Smart Hobbies community. First, I want to thank John Lemire and Carl Gustafero for buying me coffees. I appreciate your support. It motivates me to keep making great content. Second, I want to give a special shout out to John Brown and Rock Rat Zero for giving me the correct solutions to the June Reward Puzzle Pack by Logan Wall. I put the solution video on my Buy Me A Coffee page for my Smarty Party members. My next reward pack for members only is coming out July 1st, and it's called Cityscape by none other than Jovial. She's going to educate you on a fascinating Sudoku idea through five brand new puzzles. Join the Smarty Party now by clicking on the membership link in the description or the pinned comment below to get this pack. You will not find this anywhere else. Now, I'll show you that special trick you need to solve this puzzle by our Friday featured setter, Shy. Click below if you want to give it a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, you have to notice something very special about this puzzle. You want to look at the grid because it's going to tell you everything you need to know on how to solve it. What you might notice is if you look at the ones, you got three ones right here. Okay? If you look at the twos, they're kind of in the same placement, similar pattern as the ones, right? Three different rows in the same columns, two, five, and eight. And then with the threes, you might notice that it's up here and down there. So if like if you spun these first three rows, and I'll kind of color that. If you spun this around in needle pusher, it kind of makes me think of a record. If you spin this around, if you spun this three, it would spin around and end up in this spot. And this three would spin around and end up in that spot. This is called symmetry. That the puzzle has symmetry. And if you took the one and you spun it around clockwise and, and flipped these three rows on its head, it'd end up right there. Okay? Same thing with these threes. And then now with these fours, what you might notice is that the four and the five are kind of like opposite. So if you spun the four around clockwise, you end up here where the five is. You spun the five, you end up with the four. But look to the remaining part of the puzzle. You, you can do the same thing with these three rows and with these three rows. Okay, let me get rid of the color here because I want to make sure you understand this concept. So look at the four and the five. I'll highlight one in blue and one in green. You spun the first three rows, the four would end up where the five is, the five would end up where the four is. If you spun the middle three rows, again, the four would spin around and end up where the five is, and the five would end up where the four. And then the other place you see a four and a five would be right here. If you spun these three rows, Lift it around, the five would end up right here where the four is, the four would end up with the five. When you have a candidate spin around and match to itself, that's called a single mapping. All right, we're working with a symmetrical puzzle. Symmetrical, just think of the idea of you're folding it in half, or in this case, spinning it upside down. And it applies to the whole puzzle, or what we're doing, you're going to spin three rows at a time. Okay, so this is single mapping when it's the same candidate. And with the fours and the fives, the way that they are symmetrical, this is double mapping, right? So the four and the five is a double mapping. And now if you look, and let's look at the sixes and the sevens, you'll notice the sixes and sevens, you spun the middle three rows, the six, let's use uh, red here, and we'll use purple. The six would spin around to the seven, the seven would spin around to the six, if you flipped the bottom three rows, the seven would spin all the way back around and end up where that six is, okay? And you have any other places for a six or seven? No. There's also a shorter version called GSP, GERS Symmetrical Placement. And it applies to symmetry within the puzzle. And you're like, well, why is this important, Timberlake? 
uh, why do I care that you know this eight and nine seem to be symmetrical with each other? We do blue and yellow. You flip the eight, you get to the nine here. You flip the nine here, you get to the eight here. And the reason why it's important, you get the eight here to the nine there, is that if the puzzle is perfectly symmetrical, you cannot have a unique solution. So we gotta be able to break this. Otherwise, you would not be able to uh, solve this puzzle in theory because the, the digits would just keep mapping to each other and you wouldn't have anything that's unique. Other thing to keep in mind is you could change out the digits that they're spinning on and that would create a unique solution. Problem is these digits are already given, they can't be changed. So you're spinning the first three rows around the one, the second three rows around the three, third three rows around the two. So you can't change those. There's no way to create a unique solution that way. So what we have to do is see something that breaks the symmetry. Well, you were looking at these eights and nines. There's only one other digit I haven't highlighted yet. It's this eight right here. You'll notice if you spin this eight around, it would end up right there. And the eights are doubly mapped to the nines. And what that means is if this eight is here, the nine is there, the eight's here, the nine would be right there to be a completely symmetrical puzzle. But if we put the nine there, this puzzle won't solve. It will not solve, it'll be symmetrical and it won't have a unique solution. So what we know and what Jovial is telling us is this cell right here cannot be a nine. Using symmetry, using GER symmetrical placement and the idea of spinning these three rows, three sets of rows, you can find out that if we eliminate a nine from this cell, we're gonna be able to solve this puzzle. Otherwise, we will not be able to solve this puzzle. So instead of a nine being here, the only thing that can be here would be a six and a seven, because you have a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and an eight, and then we just said no more nines. This is beautiful stuff. You cannot figure this out with a computer solver. You have to look at it and look for symmetry. And then we're just touching on this idea. I'll put a link to a post that Jai did that explains symmetry a little bit more, and I might cover this topic uh, because she actually created some more puzzles like this that show some more concepts. I'm fascinated by it. And I feel like we're on the cusp of like new Sudoku theory that I can share with you, the viewer. And now it's time for my fun fact about Shy. I asked who helps you with the testing and ideas. And it's not a surprise, but Shy said that Jovial is her number one tester. They got a similar puzzling background, it's her best friend, and a similar style, and they just feed off of each other with these puzzle testing. She also works with a lot of members of the GAP team. So GAP is generally acceptable pencil puzzle team. And so they work on more like variant type Sudokus and other uh, puzzles that may not be just Sudoku. And so I think it's fascinating. I love to hear how the community comes together to create these awesome and amazing puzzles. You've been fabulous this month shy with all these puzzles and i'm kind of sad that this is the last one because we're at the end of the month but i will feature other puzzles by you in the future i promise getting back to the puzzle you'll notice now with no nine in column nine here row three there's only one place left for a nine up here in the block and so we can actually solve that cell now for a nine with these two nines and this nine we can solve for a nine here in block nine and with the nine in row nine and eight, and this nine, we can solve for nine here in block seven. And now we're actually starting to make some solves. There was one cell you could have solved right off the bat. So if you look at these two eights and this eight, you could have solved an eight right here, and probably most of you did. And you're like, Tim, like, why didn't you show that? The reason I didn't show the eight right away, because I wanted to show you the symmetry. It was a little easier to see it without putting this eight in here first, because then you'd be like, well, why are we not talking about putting a nine right there? Uh, it would be... Another thing to consider that we wouldn't be able to put the nine there and you see the nine doesn't go there. But uh, that's why I held off on that. And congratulations if you did find that eight prior to me talking about the uh, symmetry piece. Okay, after putting the eight here, now with these two nines, we can actually solve a nine here and we're gonna be able to finish out the nines because in columns four and six, we got nines. We, got a, we have a nine right there. This has to be a nine. The nines in rows four and six in column two mean this has to be a nine and we have solved all of the nines. 
The next digit you want to look at is actually the seven. So you go to the seven here and this seven cutting up, there's only one place for seven in block four. And now with this seven placement, you only have three possibilities for candidates here in column one. We're looking for three, five, and six. I have a five and a six looking into this cell. So this has to be your three. The six here, that's got to be your five. And then this would be the six to finish out column one. Okay, after doing that, let's look in here in block four. You have a three coming down. Column three, a three cutting across. We can actually solve for three here in block four. And after doing that, look up here and go, okay, I got a five cutting across. Row one, a five coming up. Column three, I can solve for five right there. With these two fives and this five, we can solve for five in block three. And with these two fives and the five here, we can solve for five in block nine and so we're moving along pretty well here if you just love solving sudoku subscribe to smart hobbies i'll give you new videos every week all right these two fives in row seven and nine with this five means there's only one place for a five in block eight and column four and six now have five so the only place to put a five here in block five is right there and now we've taken care of all of the fives okay let's look in column five, where can a four be, right? It can't be here because of this four, and it can't be here because of this four. So you know this has to be a four. And now with these two fours, we can solve for a four here in block seven. With these two fours, we can solve for a four here in block one. With these two fours, we can solve for a four in block three. All right, and we got a couple more fours. So these two fours and the four cutting across. Row five means we can solve for a four here. And now with these two fours in rows five and six, and then in column four, we can solve for a four in block five. So we took care of all of the fours. I want to kind of show you here uh, the twos. You know, you see right here, there's only two candidates left here in block one. So either you got a two here or here. So the twos can't be anywhere else down column three. Since this block needs a one and a two, and we know a two has to be one of these two spots. I'll kind of highlight that and just kind of show the twos. Then we know the two in block four has to be right there. So that's got to be your two, and that's got to be your one. All right, let's get rid of the colors. And we'll continue on with the solving here. All right, since this is going to be a two and a seven, what's remaining down here now is going to be an eight. So we can put the eight right there. Nice. And now with the eight and the eight right here, we can start solving some of these eights. The eight. And the eight here with this eight cutting across means this has to be an eight. And now with the eights in rows four and six and the eight here, this has to be an eight. So we solved all the eights. Look across row eight. Anytime I have eight candidates filled in, I said eight a lot there. You know that you can, that's called a full house. And you can solve the remaining empty cell for wherever the missing candidates. In this case, it's a one. And these two ones and the one right here, you can solve for one right there. Nice. And then... You can actually do a pointing pair of ones. These S1 comes down column nine, and that limits the ones of these two cells here in block nine. That's a pointing pair. And by a pointing pair, it means that since the ones have to be in block nine somewhere and they're limited to row seven, ones can't be anywhere else along row seven. So you can't have a one right there. So where does the one go here in block seven? It goes right here, which means this has to be a six now to finish block seven. Nice. Okay, let's go over to the three. So you got a three cutting across row five. This three coming down. Only place left for a three in block six is right there. Now with these two threes, it means this has to be a three, which displaces our Snyder one. So we can solve this cell for a one now. And now since this one is coming up, we know we can solve for a one right here. And since we have eight candidates filled in here, we know we can solve this for a seven, which means we can solve that cell now for a six let's finish up with the threes three here in rows eight nine or this three means that three has to be right here in block eight and with these two threes and this three a three has to be here in block two we got all of the threes now nice all right we got a full house down here i'm always going to work on those if, when i see them and so that means this has to be a six which means we have to have a seven right there awesome and now let's finish this full house. We are missing a seven in column five, so we can solve for a seven there. I don't see a seven here in block three, so that's gotta be your seven. That's gotta be your two. If you remember, we had a two and a seven over here, so this has gotta be your seven, and that's your two now. Awesome. And then I don't see a two here in block two, so that's gotta be your two. And this is gonna be actually a six. 
Okay, I got no place for no two showing in column four, so I'll put the two right there. Creates another full house, so we can solve for six here, and then we get another full house. And you see, we get to the end, everything just ends up being pretty much a full house. We need a seven right there. We're looking for a two and a six. I got my six in row four. So here's your two, and here's your six. I hadn't had a chance to show you all the seemingly impossible puzzles that Shy has created. However, if you want to see another one that I did solve, check out this video. Thank you so much, Shy, for being my Friday featured setter. I enjoyed all these puzzles, and I learned so much about Sudoku from this and from you. And I want to thank you so much for watching.